Welcome back to the Show and Tell Show. We are back for another episode of bringing out mysteries from our collections area. We challenged Penetanguishing Centennial last week to bring something pig related out from the collection. We've had chickens for National Rotisserie Chicken Day and it was the Pork Rind Festival last week in Ohio. So I thought something pig related would be kind of cool. What do we have Genevieve from Heronium Museum? Okay, I have to preface this by saying that I always get my pig, my ham, whatever, nicely butchered and um, packaged. So I learned an awful lot this week. <laughs> so what I have brought in are two bell or candlestick hog scrapers. So oh, these are oh. used and they are still used today. You can look them up. You'll find lots of videos on how to butcher a pig. So once your pig's been killed and the blood has been drained, what you do is then uh, you have to scald your pig. There's a couple of ways to do that. Um, lots of interesting videos online on um, scalding your pig in this great big hog scalder. It's a massive pot that's full of boiling water. So you hang your um, pig by his back legs from this kind of coat hanger like contraction called a gambrel. You've got him suspended from the front end loader or your tractor, a winch on a tractor. And then you dip him into the scalding water, swish him around for a couple of minutes and then pull him out and the hair should be ready to come off. So these things are kind of like razors, like straight or safety razors. And so then you just rub them along the pig and remove all those really um, tough bristles. And now honey, that will ensure that you don't have hairy pork rinds. So there you go. Like, I don't know how old these are, but they like, have not changed shape at all. They are the exact same things that you can buy online from various um, Amazon possibly, if you're interested. So there you go, the uh, hog scraper. They look like symbols. <laughs> They do. I had no idea what they were. I thought they were bells without the clappers. This really not very well designed bells and symbols. I had no idea until I looked it up. And so there we go. I learned something. It was it's just like something a, new every day with this, Bob. It's just like a fish scaler. Like when you it scale is, a fish. It is. Yeah. Yep. 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 Wow. It's very simple. See, there's something I didn't even know we had in the collection. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have like so much stuff. Anyway, what have we got over at Penetanguishine? Well, um, you challenged us with the pig. We managed to come up with the chicken. We've also managed to come up with the pig. Really? So, we have, because you could, like, when you do a pig roast, right? <laughs> you can present the whole pig, right? And here's the little apple. He wouldn't, he wouldn't hold it in his mouth, so it's just sitting to the side. But, yes, I have done a couple of pig roasts myself, and yeah, they're quite delicious. So, there you go. You weren't able to stump us there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when we talk about the pig, if we think about our early settlers, um, actually the pig was introduced to North America in the latter part of the 16th century. So the early settlers um, would just let them roam through the woods and they would feed on acorns and things like that. And um, prior to the time of them putting up fences, they would just kind of wander through the, the woods. And butchering, Genevieve kind of touched on that, the, you know, the dip, dipping in the hot water, whatever. It was done in the fall when the weather was colder so that mm -hmm. the meat would not go bad during the process because it would take all day to do a big hog, you know, once you cut your hams off and your, your bacon and all those other parts. But nothing could be, would be wasted because you could pickle the feet. Um, you can also uh, roast the tail, um, dry the ears, um, make head cheese by boiling the head. And people are turned off by that, but it's really just the meat coming off the head. And it, it's, it's set in like a gelatin. We can buy it in the stores today. It's just a lunch meat, right? So Schneider it's just, still makes it. Yeah, yeah. They do. You can still yeah. get it from Schneider's. It's more common to find it 
I find in the country, in the country kind of grocery stores, they order right. it still. Right. Because yeah. it's not cheese by any means. No. It's a lunch meat. No, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because there wasn't any refrigeration, of course, you would want it. You could smoke it. You could pickle it. You could um, do all those things with it. And you could also make sausages. And so what we have for our artifact today is um, this meat grinder made by the Alexander Verk uh, Company. And it was established in 1885. And if we look down inside the funnel where you would feed in the raw meat, um, there's a, a swirly thing in there that would push the meat forward and it would come out this end as ground meat. So the Alexander Vert company did claim that their, their machinery was pretty much indestructible. However, ours is missing a handle, so they might have exaggerated the claim a little bit. I'm assuming <laughs> the hand, handle at some time broke. So anyway, so yeah, it would come out this end. And you would use um, the intestines, you would wash them very thoroughly, of course. And you could use the intestines of the pig to make your sausage out of. And I think for the most part nowadays, we have artificial casings. So uh, this is our artifact for the, for the pig day. Very and you know what I have? For you, Nahani, because I had to have something for you because you set up this challenge. I have a recipe to make your own oh. pork rinds. <laughs> wow. So I, I need to do that. I will send it to you. I'm looking forward to it, and I shall bring a sample back to you should I ever attempt the pork I do yeah. like to cook and try new things, so it's not beyond yeah. me. Yeah. Awesome. You just need, you only need a couple of things. You need uh, the skin with a thick layer of fat. Yeah. You no cut it into bite-sized pieces, um, spray them with olive oil and kosher salt, and, and bake them. And there you've got. You can save money. You don't have to buy your pork rinds. <laughs> or go to Ohio for their festival. True. Sure. There you go. What's our <laughs> challenge next week? What, you, what have you got for us? So our challenge next week is because... Next week is um, National Indigenous Peoples Day, so we thought we should bring out an artifact from our collection that, you know, is um, hopefully pre-contact, if we have anything, um, because, you know, to honor Indigenous Peoples Day. I think we have that one covered at Heronia Museum. Yeah, I oh, thought, you I thought it was throwing you a pretty easy easy one but I just thought because of the week that it's going to be I, I didn't want to ignore the week so yeah bring out yeah. you know live up to the name of your museum and bring us with your your best artifact oh I think <laughs> but, but do don't that. get too Should comfortable yeah don't get too comfortable because we've got a doozy coming up for you soon yes okay okay you know what because I have been planning another challenge and I hope I don't forget what it is by the time it's our turn again <laughs> But we've got a good one for you in the near future. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. All right, well, thanks for okay. joining us, everybody, again. It's always awesome seeing you and having you join us. Bye, see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.